Hello everyone, and in this video, I'm going to be explaining how to start out on Hypixel Skyblock, and this video is going to be broken down into three different categories, actually four, but the first one's going to be armor, second weapons, the next is going to be any ways to make money, so different types of farms, different methods, anything really, and the last one's just going to be helpful tips and tricks that you can use to get started on Hypixel Skyblock. I hope you enjoy the video. So the first category is armor, and the first armor you're going to want to buy is this diamond armor from the Armorsmith. Now this diamond armor is not the best armor in the game like it is in vanilla Minecraft. This is actually the first armor that most people get. Now some people get iron armor. You should definitely not buy the iron armor because it doesn't really give you enough defense for it to be worth it, but the diamond armor gives you enough defense to survive in the lapis mines which is good if you want to get lapis armor so once you've bought your diamond armor what you're going to want to do is go to the lapis mines which all you have to do is go to the left from the start of the deep caverns then go down this little tunnel here as you can see there's a bunch of lapis everywhere that means I'm now in the lapis mines now the reason you're here is to get the lapis armor now to get the lapis armor you need to kill these lapis zombies here now I actually have two lapis armor helmets in my inventory at the moment now it's kind of rare to get this lapis armor um like I'm pretty sure it's like a 1% chance to drop which obviously it's in great but luck 5 and looting 3 do help with that so that's a something you should consider if you're having trouble getting lapis armor and another way to get lapis armor is to just kind of stay around here in the lapis mines a lot of people just maybe mining lapis for xp will give you any spare lapis armor they happen to get in the lapis mines which can definitely help you in your quest to get lapis armor now one thing about lapis armor is that it first of all increases your health by 60 which is a full set bonus and it also gives 50% more XP when mining any ore, which is obviously very helpful if you want a lot of XP. So this can be useful even when you're in the end game stage of the game, because you're going to need a lot of XP when you're enchanting off your armor. So yeah, I hope this helps. So another armor set I feel I should mention is the miner set, and I just happen to have two pieces of the miner armor in my inventory already. Now I just went down to the diamond reserve for maybe five minutes and I already got those two pieces so it's fairly easy to get. Shouldn't be any problem at all. Now this armor set is not necessary at all to get. It's just kind of useful if you want to survive in the mines a little better. Now one thing I should mention is that the miner set from the obsidian sanctuary is enchanted with protection 5 when it drops. So if that's important to you, then grind at the Obsidian Sanctuary instead of in the Diamond Reserve. But also, the zombies and skeletons in the Obsidian Sanctuary are way more difficult than the Diamond Reserve. So keep those two factors in mind while trying to get the Miner set. So the next category I'm going to be going over is the swords, or really any weapons in general. So the first weapon you're going to want to buy is the Undead Sword. Now this sword does 30 damage and plus 100% damage to any undead mobs. This is very good because in the deep caverns, pretty much every mob except creepers and slimes are going to get one-shotted by the sword. And if you're worried about the creepers or slimes, well first of all, if you have a well-enchanted undead sword, it can one-shot the slimes. Or at least pretty close to one-shotting them. But if you enchant it correctly, it will one-shot both those mobs anyway. Now, another very good sword that you can get is the Cleaver. Now, this is in your gold collection. It's called Ingot 2. As you can see, it has uh, 40 damage and plus 10 strength. The ability is bad, just don't use it, because it will actually stop you from being able to hit any of those mobs again afterwards. It's kind of confusing. There's videos on it if you're wondering about game mechanics, but it's very simple to craft, just four uh, gold ingots and two sticks. 
And for 50 attack damage, that's not bad. So, the last sword I'm gonna show you and recommend is the Silver Fang. Now this one you should buy from the auction house. This isn't exactly uh, early game, but it's early mid game. Now this Silver Fang does 100 damage. If we can actually, there we go. It does 100 damage and it says plus 2 strength, but just because of the reforge. And as you can see, this one's going for 600,000 coins, which is insane. Really, it should be only going for about 2,000, 4,000, 5,000, maybe a maximum of 25,000. If it's above 25,000, then don't bid for it, even if it's maxed out. I hope you can gain some information about swords from this little segment. So, the next category in this video is ways to make money. Now, for this I'm going to be staying mostly on my island, but there are a few ways to grind money in the hub island. Now the first thing I'm going to recommend is this pumpkin farm here. It does not have to look exactly like this, it can be smaller or larger, it does not have to have three layers to it, but really, just mine a bunch of pumpkins and then sell them to NPCs. Very simple, and the more pumpkins you mine, the higher your farming level gets, which gives you more pumpkins, which gives you more money. So basically, the more you mine pumpkins, the more money you will get. The next technique I'm going to be showing you is this little cobblestone generator right here. Now, the reason this is so good is because you can take the enchanted cobblestone you get from this and sell it in the auction house. Let's see, the enchanted cobblestone recipe is right here. As you can see, this is how you craft one enchanted cobblestone. And usually, I would sell about a stack of it. And that goes for about 80,000 coins on the auction house. Could be a little more, could be a little less. On the auction house, it's all luck based. And if you do happen to have enough cobblestone to craft a super compactor, you can either put this on a minion, which will drastically increase the amount of storage. Basically makes it infinite if you have more than three slots of storage. And if you collect the minion uh, resources daily, then you'll pretty much never run out of space. But, if you're not worried about that, you can sell these super compactors for like 400,000, 300,000. In between there, a little less, a little more. It goes for quite a lot in the auction house. And the next way of making money, and this is probably the best way in my opinion, is this magma farm here. Now, you don't have to build it just like this, there's many ways to build magma farms. but. This is the way that I decided to build it because, well, I think it's just the most simple. And something you're going to want to know about magma cube farms is that they don't take fall damage or lava damage. And that means it's kind of hard to kill. So you're going to either want to kill them with drowning or with cactuses. It doesn't matter which way, except I recommend drowning because, uh, Cactuses can sometimes delete the drops from the magma cubes. Now, the final method I'm going to be showing you is this nether wart farm down here. Now, this is not currently active, but usually right here, there will be a nether wart farm crystal, which can be, uh, which spawns on a nether wart islands. And I believe they're in the nether rack collection. Yes, Nether Wart Island right here. This is how you craft it. And when you place down the Nether Wart Island, there'll be a Nether Wart Crystal on it. See, I have mine over there at the moment. Let's see. There it is. That little floating thing. That's the Nether Wart Crystal. It spawns Nether Wart on nearby Soul Sand. And usually there would be a Cobblestone Minion somewhere around here. And because this is all stone brick, I cannot place or break any Cobblestone except for this block right here. And basically, when this block breaks, Water will flow down, break all the nether wart, and it will be collected by this chest system down here. So yeah, that's actually a very good way of getting a ton of money. I used that for quite a while until I built this magma farm. The magma farm's a bit better, but definitely keep in mind this nether wart farm. Uh, the only downside to it is that it usually it uses a minion slot because you need a cobblestone minion for it to work. I apologize if you could hear my dog barking. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure if you can hear it, but if you can, sorry about that. 
But really, any automatic farms they can make without minions are definitely good because, like, this cactus farm here is fully automatic. Basically, the cactuses will break when it tries to grow into the fence post, and it'll all be collected by that water stream. And I can sell any of the cactuses that are produced by this farm. So any farm that doesn't require minions, feel free to make, and that will improve the amount of money you get. I hope you enjoyed this video. Remember, like, subscribe, and I hope to see you in the next Minecraft video. Bye, everyone.